Hey, fifth grade. How are you doing today? Um, I really miss you guys. Welcome to week two of our virtual instruction. You guys have officially been doing your best to be adaptable and aware while completing your learning at home. Um, I got to give a big shout out to Talaya. Talaya has been doing a great job sending me some writing she's doing for fun. Shout out to Lakira, who has been absolutely killing it on the comprehension questions for As Brave As You. Uh, Dylan, I see that you've been on Quizlet practicing. Thank you for all your hard work. Andrew, great job getting logged in and commenting on something every day. Kendall, Bryn, keep up the good work. Jamil, I see you. You're getting these answers right, man. Congratulations. Dylan H., hello. Thank you for doing your do nows. Samaj, great use of transition words last week, man. I am here for it. Nice work. Tainif, Yasir, Mace, all my guys. I can't wait to see you guys do some more creative work on this Google Classroom today. Um, if anybody that I missed, I'm thinking of you, Anila, Mulani, Jeremiah. I hope you guys are doing well, all right? Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to read the next 10 pages of As Brave As You, and then we'll get to do a vocab, vocab block as well real fast. I want to remind you that on Friday of this week, you are going to have a vocab quiz. Yes, I found a way to give you a quiz even though I can't see you in real life. Um, because we're having that vocab quiz on Friday, I also want to try and see if we can somehow play Quizlet live together from our houses on Thursday. So I'll send you some more information about that, but I think it could be really, really fun for all of us to be on our devices separate from each other and to play a game together. Um, it could feel like we are back at home in our classroom together. As usual, if you have any questions, I've been calling your parents pretty much every night. Um, feel free to jump on the phone if there's something that you want to ask me. I am going to be expecting, starting this week, 100% participation in the online pieces. So on the Google Classroom, you have a journal, a do now sheet, and a comprehension page. Every day, you should be writing something on all three of those documents. So if you need assistance with that, please give me a call on your parents' phone and I can walk you through it. I want all of us to be super successful so that you guys can be ready to be in Mr. Girl's sixth grade class next year. I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot of you guys on the phone about As Brave As You. I am really, really into this book and I'm excited to learn more. I was looking really, really closely at the cover today and I wondered if you guys had done that yet. I know that last week on Monday we mentioned how this has won three different awards and that one of the awards is that Coretta Scott King Award for books that are about brotherhood, peace, and social justice. Today what I noticed is that I think this is Ernie because if you look closely at him, guys, he has sunglasses on. But I'm noticing that this might be Jeannie then and that his arms look like he's kind of lost or struggling. Finally, I noticed that this tree these things that I had been thinking were leaves before, they actually kind of look like they're birds. And so I wonder if that's something that we're going to learn a little bit more about soon. Jeannie has been asking Grandpa tons and tons of questions. He has not yet asked him the big question, which is, why do you have a gun in your pants right now? I'm curious to see if he asks that today. And I really love that we're reading this together because I feel like we are... Um, watching a movie about a family, and it's really, really cool. We're going to start today on the top of page 65, where it says, guess not. So we're going to be right here. And Jeannie just asked Grandpa what his first name is. Grandpa shared that his first name is Brooke, and Jeannie's comment was that that's a girl's name. Now, do you guys think that there's names still nowadays that are just girls' names or just boys' names? Not really, right? Everybody gets to choose whatever it is that they would like. So it's a little bit interesting to see our characters have a different take on that. Page 65. We are reading all the way to page 75 today. Next week we will have read 100. No, this week we will have read 100 pages of a book together online. So good for you guys. Here we go. Guess not, Jeannie said at last. He took the final swig of the tea jar. It still felt weird to drink from the jar. Wait, one last question. Grandpa whipped up the cloth from his shirt pocket again, like a magician does before turning it into a bird. He wiped his neck with it, 
then his forehead, and then stuffed it back into its place. Last one. What was your job? Grandpa folded his arms and leaned back until the front legs of his chair rose up off of the floor. You guys know how that makes me crazy when you do that in the classroom. I was in the Army. I fought in Vietnam. 1st Battalion, 6th Infantry. My position was rifleman. Like, rifle rifles? Your job was to shoot rifles? Pretty much. Their dad had told him and Ernie stories about Grandpa teaching him how to shoot when he was younger. But he never said that it was because the old man was an expert and that pretty much it was his job to shoot. This, of course, set Jeannie off. Is that why you have a gun in your pants? He asked with what seemed like the perfect timing. But ex his excitement wouldn't let him wait for an answer. He just barreled on. Wait, so can you teach me how to shoot? Grandpa froze. Then he looked, looked at Jeannie again. Now, little wood, Grandpa cleared his throat. I'm afraid you already done asked your last question. Chapter four. If you guys want me to start doing a Southern accent again for Grandpa, just let me know. Send me a Jupiter message and I'll see what I can do. Question time over. Jeannie went back inside, but this time his grandmother had something to say about it. She stopped him on the porch. Now listen here. You ain't gonna keep running in and out of my house all day, you hear me? You either gonna be in or out. So which will it be? Jeannie squinted in the bright light to scope out Ernie, who was now shaking Samantha's paw before responding, out? Good, so stay out. I don't want to be chasing flies around the kitchen all afternoon. As Grandma went in the house, Jeannie checked the porch for that dirt, that sky dirt bird again. But it wasn't there, so he headed out into the yard. Farther and farther until he reached the spot where the cliff began. It was as if someone had snapped the land off, jagged and uneven like torn bread. The drop was steep. But what was even more fascinating than the cliff was the view. The sky seemed bigger than he had ever seen it, full of white clouds. Jeannie pretended that they were the shape of pistols. Grandpa was still on his mind, until he snapped out of it and they turned back into big, shapeless cotton balls. And there were so many trees, lush and green, peppered only by a few houses. A yellow one with black shutters. A white one like Grandma and Grandpa's, the roof caved in and half of the house charred black. What can you infer from the descriptive terms that Jeannie used right there? Yes, awesome, I agree with you, Bryn. I think you're totally on point with this. It looks like that house might be abandoned because maybe it had a fire. I'm noticing that charred is used and something's charred when it's like blackened and burned from a flame. Those were really the only ones that caught Jeannie's eye. They were at the very bottom of the hill, across the narrow road that led to the entrance of his grandparents' property. There was someone on the porch of one of those houses, a person down on all four, banging on something. Hey, Ernie, Jeannie called out. Check this out. What? said Ernie, jogging over. He looked down the hill. Who's that? You think I know? Doesn't look like a grown-up, Ernie said, putting his hand to his brow to block the sun. Is that a girl? Looks like one, Jeannie said, as they both stared at the girl and at the red house, as if they had never seen a girl or a red house before. A green car came up the road and turned into the yard of the second red house. The girl raised her head and waved at the driver, who tooted the horn and then bumped through the grass around the back of the house. What's she doing? Ernie asked, now the one with all of the questions. Jeannie didn't answer as he was trying to figure out the exact same thing. Judging by, judging by the constant banging, she was either fixing something or breaking something. Maybe a piece of wood from the porch had come loose and she was replacing it. There were a few cracked ones on Grandma and Grandpa's porch that could use a little touch up. So maybe that's what she was up to. Jeannie was thinking when Ernie slapped his arm. Come on. And he started down the hill. 
Dee Dee scrambled after him, trying to step easy. But dang, that still hill was steep. Too steep. Gravity yanked them both towards the bottom a lot faster than they had expected. Have you guys ever done that before where you're walking down a hill and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm going so fast. That's what's happening here, right? They started to slide and whoa, 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 doing everything that they could to stay upright. Ernie had better balance. You had to have it to be good at karate. I mean, he could stand on one leg for 74 seconds. All right, so pause the video right now. Set a timer for 74 seconds. I want you to do some yoga. Can you stand on one leg without switching your legs and without holding on to a wall or anything? for 74 seconds. Go ahead and give it a shot and then press play again on the video when you're done. How did we do? Who was able to handle it? Samaj, you could do it. Lakira got it, excellent. Yasir, very good at balance. I think all your biking taught you that. Awesome, oh, Dylan H, good for you. I bet you got that too. Jeannie had counted. Jeannie, on the other hand, didn't have that talent. And after a few seconds of sliding down the hill, he slipped. And let me tell you, there's a big difference between a slip and a slide. A slide is an almost slip, but a slip, now that's a problem. A slip leads to a fall, but Jeannie didn't just fall. He fell and tumbled head over feet, feet over head, feet over head, over and over again grunting and thumping his way down to the bottom, leaving a cloud of dust and burnt dried up grass trailing behind him. Oh my gosh, I hope he didn't bump his head. Jeannie, Ernie cried, cautiously sliding as quickly as he could to the bottom. Jeannie lay flat on his back, his arms spread out as if he was making a snow angel, a grass angel. Jeannie, Ernie repeated, panicked, now standing over him. You okay? Jeannie opened his eyes, his chest heaving. Ugh, he moaned, reaching for Ernie's hand. I'm okay, I'm okay, stupid hill. But once Ernie got him back to his feet and made sure that he wasn't broken all up, the fear turned into funny. Has anyone ever done that before? I can connect with that for sure. At least to Ernie, who was trying his best to fight his smile. It ain't funny, Jeannie said, embarrassed. He examined his knees and elbows for scrapes and blood. You better not laugh. Ain't nobody laughing, man, Ernie said, a jumpy grin smeared across his face. Hey, a voice cut right between them, reminding them why they had come down the hill in the first place. Jeannie looked up. Across the road was a girl, a hammering girl. She glared at them, still on her porch, but now holding the hammer up like a weapon. Guys, what does it mean when you say somebody glared at you instead of somebody looked at you? What does it mean if they're glaring? Jeremiah, what does it mean if they're glaring? Right. So glaring isn't like necessarily the nicest way to look at somebody. Like I might imagine that this would be me glaring. Right. So she's standing on the other side of the street glaring at them, holding a hammer like it's a weapon. Does she think that they're here to do something nice? Does she seem mysterious? I want to know who she is. Why does she have a hammer? Why does she have a hammer? Let's find out. She was dressed in cutoffs and a t-shirt. No shoes, no socks. Her skin was dark and shiny as a wet street, and so was her hair. What is that? Jamel. Yes, it's a simile. Good job. It makes it so we can picture inside of our heads what this girl looks like. She had it yanked back into a messy pony tail. Who y'all? Jeannie and Ernie stood frozen like two statues, one dustier than the other. Ernie got it together first. Sorry, he said. Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. He put his hands up as though making sure that she knew they came in peace. The girl, who looked about Ernie's age, wiped the sweat from her forehead and squinted as if he and Je Jeannie aren't actually there, as if they were a mirage. I want you guys to circle the word mirage. That's a challenging word. 
I'm going to tell you what a mirage is. A mirage is something that you see that's not really there. And it typically happens maybe like when you're in a desert and you think that you see a lake, but it's just a mirage. It's just something that your brain is tricking you to see. I want you to Google that word and see if you could use it in a sentence in the next week. I think that'd be super cool. She raised her hammer even higher when Ernie jumped into a small ditch and walked across the road yard. Jeannie following, slapping the grass and the dirt off of almost every part of his body. Reaching the porch, undeterred by the hammer, Ernie introduced himself. I'm Ernie, and this brilliant acrobat here is my brother, Jeannie. He waited for a smile, got nothing. Um, we're visiting our grandparents for the month. He pointed back up the hill. Who? said the girl, lowering the hammer, but just by an inch. Notice where she's holding the hammer is sort of giving us an opportunity to infer how friendly she's being. So when she holds the hammer up, we're like, oh gosh, she's nervous. She's nervous, right? But as she starts to lower the hammer, we're like, oh, she doesn't feel like she has to protect herself as much. She's starting to realize she can trust them. That's all about inferencing, my genius friends. Please say inferencing. Samaj, say inferencing. Nice job. Thank you. Ma and Pop Harris? Dee Dee nodded and wondered if the girl was somehow related, since she referred to Grandma and Grandpop as Ma and Pop. Yeah, Ernie said, nodding. You know them? Everybody know them, the girl said, now setting the hammer on the porch. So y'all there kin, huh? I... Ernie looked at Jeannie. Jeannie shrugged. Kin? What do you mean? Kin, she repeated. Lord, y'all don't know what kin is? She hopped up. Means family, related, blood. She rattled off, flashing a duh face. Oh yeah, said Ernie, trying to regain some cool. We their kin. Well, y'all ain't from around here, obviously. So where are y'all from? Jeannie spoke up. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Ernie confirmed, a step behind. There's something about calling out Brooklyn that makes you feel like you've grown a few inches, maybe sprouted some hairs on your chin or an extra lump in your bicep. And when you say it, your whole body goes into the world. The word. Never heard of it, the girl said, her eyelids lowered to that so what level. What? Ernie balked. Nah, nah, of course I know where Brooklyn is. You city folk just always be thinking we country folk don't know nothing, but we be knowing. She smiled. We be know him. Colorful rubber bands were woven over the metal braces that covered her teeth. It was a rainbow in her mouth. I'm Tess, by the way. Now she jumped off the porch, landing a foot away from them. So why y'all come down here? To see your grandparents, Jeannie said, thinking that Ernie had already made it clear when he said that they were kin. No, I mean down here. What y'all want? Well, we saw you banging from up there, and so we were just wondering what you were doing. After Jeannie said it, he realized how creepy it sounded. Like maybe he and Ernie were stalkers? Fixing something? Ernie asked quick. Nah, Tess said, looking back at the red porch. I ain't fixing nothing. I'm making some stuff. She climbed back up to her workstation, the boys cautiously following. On the porch were two coffee cans a red cup, the hammer, a pair of wire cutters, and one nail. In this can, Tess held one up, are beer bottle caps. She took a cap out and set it on one side of the wooden planks. Then, without any warning, she took a hammer and bam, 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 whacked the cap over and over again until it was flat. Both Ernie and Jeannie jumped, and then they tried to recover quickly so that Tess wouldn't notice especially Ernie. Ernie really didn't want her to notice. Jeannie could tell. Tess held the mashed up cap and looked proud, as if she had just dug up a piece of gold. Perfect, she declared, setting it back down. Jeannie thought that it looked like a coin from a different country. <gasps> Andrew, coins from different countries. He had never seen any coins from anywhere else, but he wouldn't have been surprised if quarters in Mozambique looked like flattened beer caps. 
Then, Tess went on, what I do is I take this nail here and I put it right at the top of the cap, like this. She positioned the nail towards the top of the cap, towards the edge of the beer cap. Then I make a hole. She tapped the nail lightly with the hammer until it punctured the metal. Now she reached into the red cup and pulled out a little fish hook. After that, I take one of these and I put it through the hole. But first you gotta clip the ends or they might stick you. Using the wire cutters, she snipped the pointy end of the hook and then stuck it into the hole she had just made in the bottle cap. Then you twist it like this so it doesn't come out. She twisted the hook a few times and then dangled it up in front of Jeannie and Ernie. Boom, you got an earring. An earring? Ernie said, holding his hand out. Yep, Tess gave it to him. Yep, she said, the other coffee can up. She held the other coffee can up. It was full of them. I sell these bad boys down at the market. Y'all wanna try? I mean, I usually wouldn't offer cause you know, it's bad for business, but I doubt y'all finna cuttin's my profits. Plus, y'all kin to mom and pop Harris. So I'll make an exception. I have so many thoughts and so many ideas for you guys from that 10 pages. I wish we could read 10 more because I'm really curious about tests, but I want you to notice when we work on our writing in the classroom, there are sometimes moments where we write the same way that we think or the same way that we talk. So you notice that the way that Tess is speaking is sort of like informal language like we would chatter with, right? But when the narrator is writing the text, it's written in that formal English. I want you to pay attention to that as we continue reading because I'd really love for us to experiment with and try to make our writing a little bit more of a formal style and use that informal language in dialogue. Remember, dialogue is inside of your quotation marks and that's stuff that the characters are saying to each other. When you write, if you use dialogue, remember you start a new paragraph every time somebody says something, okay? So every time somebody says something, you click enter, tab, open your quotation mark, and type what they say. I can't wait for you to learn more about that from this break, and I can't wait to read more of this with you tomorrow. For today, what I want you to do now is go to the Google Classroom, click the Classwork button right here up in the middle of your screen, and I want for you to open up the As Brave As You Comprehension questions and make sure you have answered the questions for chapters one, two, and three. We are now in chapter four. I wanna give a shout out to Lakira and to Dylan T. They've been doing a really great job and they've been making their answers purple and pink so that I can see quickly and see how they're doing with their comprehension. I also wanna give a shout out to Lakira because she's been making sure to do tag on those answers. Um, that's exactly what I need to see from you guys. I need to see that you remember to be on that next level, always pushing yourself to use tag to respond. After you answer those comprehension questions, take a little break, stretch your body, and then come back on over. We are going to talk vocabulary. Good luck on your questions. I'll see you in a minute.